there been anything bubbling up or anything specific, any specific questions that you can think of that you have? Or I Beverly has suggested a few topics for this morning. So we can maybe just talk about familiarity and just go over that briefly. It's that thing of um, There was an old song that Jack Jones, I don't know if you've heard of him as a singer, did years ago, I've Grown Accustomed to Her Face. You know, the whole song about is about growing accustomed to the familiar. Or kind of like, it seems like, like you were saying, Cease, when you came up here and, and Anita to, you know, this new house and this new place and this kind of a new setting, there's a little fluttering sometimes that goes on when you walk into a new setting or with new people because it's not um, familiar. You know, it's like the mind seems to have surrounded itself with sur familiar faces, familiar surroundings, familiar environment, and it seems to offer some security in familiarity. And once you start getting into the course, and the mind starts to shift and shift towards the present, and to let go of the past, it's it's a whole different feeling because one, whereas once the past and the familiar settings and surroundings seem to provide comfort, safety, security, now they no longer seem to do that. In other words, you find out, start to find out that you kind of constructed a, a haven around yourself, and it's kind of a false sense of security. Or, um, I know Anita and I were talking that one time when you were saying, um, when Mark died, it was kind of like you were gliding along and it was like, you know, you had the, the perfect life. I mean, it was, seemed like there was nothing wrong with it. It was really, seemed like the perfect life. And then it's like, in an instant, it just seemed to start to fall apart and shatter. And a good thing to question for all of us is, is when those time periods come up, when, when things seem to fall apart and shatter, did we really have the perfect life or did we kind of fall asleep into what seemed like the perfect life? Or I guess another way I always think of it is like Jesus in the Bible, he, he used the parable of, um, you know, you can build your, build your house on the rock or you can build your house on the sand. <laughs> and he told, <laughs> He told the parable is what happens when the winds and the rains come and blow. If the house is built on the sand, <laughs> it just goes away. And when, if the house is built on the rock, then the house stands. And to me, that's a metaphor for the house on sand is the illusion of safety, the illusion of security. It's really the ego kind of saying, ah, oh, do this and this and this in the world and you'll be happy and safe and secure. And then something comes up and it feels like your whole house gets washed away. And to me, it's changing our minds and really listening to the Holy Spirit and coming to clarity. That's now, I guess, to building our house on the rock. So no matter how the hard the winds blow, what was it, the, was it the, the bad wolf, the old nursery rhyme where this, I'll huff and I'll puff. Big bad wolf, I'll blow your house down. And the, the, the different pigs who built the, <laughs> constructed the house out of different things. It's like we want to come to such a strong understanding of the spirit and of mind that nothing can, can shake our peace. So the issue of familiarity, I know, is, is a sneaky one because as I've worked with people over the years, it's like with anything, you know, just like with church. You can you can go to a church sometime and you can feel something moving and then you kind of get accustomed to it and before you know it, it's a routine. It's like you get lulled into a routine and there's not that, that joy or that practice of really watching. It's kind of like everyone's going this way and you're going this way and there seems to be this sense of, of all moving in one direction, but again, it's it's real sneaky. And I know for me it's come up in the sense that when um, when we've gone deeper and deeper into things, at times the way to dismiss the course or dismiss the, 
the light and the power of the mind change is to label and dismiss. In other words, well, I know so and so and they do things this way or they have these techniques they use or this or that and the purpose of the course is to go deep, deep beyond all the techniques and everything and to not stereotype things, to not um, to not make more boxes. You know, Anita was talking yesterday about, I don't want to do that with the course. I don't want to feel dependent on the course, or I don't want to be to feel dependent on a group. I mean, that's another way that it happens where this familiarity can creep in. You know, you, you start something, it seems like there's a lot of radical ideas, and so you kind of <laughs> cling to a group or whatever. You want to don't want to slide into all those traps of making even groups special or making the course special or any of those sneaky traps where the ego tries to sneak its foot in on the journey <laughs> and just transfer, oh, this is just another another group, another this or that. You want to just try to keep it at a mind level and bring it back to what's my lesson in this? And I, I think a, a big part of taking for granted is I mean, familiarity is I need to be reminded of that. You know, just because David seems to be available, I don't want to take for granted anything about what's available. You know, I don't want to be lulled into thinking, oh, you know, I don't have to pay that much attention because he'll keep saying it, and he's going to be around, and I'm going to be around him. And I'll hear it another time if I don't get it now. Or, you know, he's, he's always going to be around, so, you know, it doesn't matter if I talk to him now or if I talk to him tomorrow or the next day or, you know. I mean, the assumption there is that it's always going to be available to me in this way. And I can see where that's, uh, that's an ego trap, you know, because I... I what happens in that is there's a there can be a sense of complacency that moves in, and also a sense of oh well, that's just what David says. Like I you know I know him I know what he says that's just something he says kind of thing. That's not it at all. It's like when the spirit speaks, the spirit speaks. And I wouldn't say to the Holy Spirit, you know, oh, that's just what you think. You know, or that's just the way you talk about it. Or I don't know if I'm making myself clear. I, I notice I don't feel like I'm real clear in even talking about it. It sneaks in there, you know, that that I start thinking I know what's available. I think I know that it's always going to be available. And I don't know you want those things, really. And you don't know whether it is either. don't know. What do you mean? That it isn't available always. Well, it is available always, but... Right. but You're not going to miss any chances either. Right. There's nothing that can be missed. But I guess my point is that I want to take I want to take the opportunity that's at hand. I want to hear the Holy Spirit the way He's speaking to me, you know. And I don't want to think that there's another way or a better way or a different way for me. If there was a better way or a different way or another way, then that would be what was in front of me. It's always in front. But the Holy Spirit can speak to you in any voice, right. not just His voice. Right. There. You know, okay. So you almost have to pay attention to everybody. We all have to pay attention to everybody. It's about paying attention, and again, for me, it's about clarity. In that, when I've taught classes and different things, um, we go into it very deeply. And at times, it's 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 staying at, at attention. In other words. The temptation a lot of times is like my friend Dorothy and Roscoe, she would work in the kitchen and 
you know, she would see the workshop going on, she would listen, because they had a speaker in the kitchen as she was making salads and everything, she would listen to the workshop, and then everybody would be asking questions and all excited and taking notes and, you know, really grasping for the ideas, and then they would say, okay, that's the end of the workshop, and then they would go into the dining room, and she would hear all the gossip and judgments and, oh, this is too salty, this is not salty enough, and da 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 da, -da. She was just observe. She said, very interesting. Workshop, <laughs> dining room. Then they'd go back into the workshop, and they'd have their questions, and this and this and this, and then they'd go back into the dining room. And it was like the mind was willing to be attentive in the workshop, but just like, well, let it, it all go. It clicked back yeah. into the familiarity in the, in the dining room, so to speak. I mean, that's just a metaphor, but you can see what we're talking about. And you may see that even with course groups, where you come, you chit-chat, da-da-da-da-da, time for the meeting to start. Okay, here we go. <laughs> then, you know, questions come, this and this and this, and then the meeting ends, and it's like, you know, it, it, the whole point of familiarity, I think, and we're not trying to say it's anything to do with David or anything like that, but it takes a lot of effort to stay attentive, and it's just easy. I mean, the ego would have the mind compartmentalize and say, I'll be, and when I go to an AA meeting, I can be in a fellowship, and then when I'm not there, when I'm doing something else, or when I'm not at a course group meeting, to really start to, to stay attentive all the time is the thing that, that gets past this familiarity thing. Because it's so easy to kind of slide back into the old compartmental way of thinking, well, and and compartmentalize the course, you know, put it into a a group meeting or a seminar or a workshop or something like that, and then just say, Phew, okay, whew, now I need a break. I'm going to go do this because it's fun or whatever. But to say, you know, to bring the thoughts. That's what the whole workbook's about. It's just to hold on to the thoughts throughout the day and to help the mind. Let go of this compartmental thinking. A practical way of talking about it is kind of like your significant other relationships or with kids or whatever, where it's this is that I know part of the mind. I know my husband. I know my wife. I know my kids. I know them well. <laughs> I've been with them a long time. I know all their habits. I know all their quirks. I know what to expect. I know what to expect from them. They surprise me occasionally, but not very often, you know. And, and it's all the past, again, I mean, that's the thing, it's that all that I know and that familiarity is the past. And, um, and frankly, when you start to go deep with the Course, a lot of times um, the mind, it, it's just uncomfortable for the mind to think that there's something beyond all this. It thinks it's got this whole thing figured out fairly well, and now these ideas start coming through and start t turning everything upside down, and a lot of times an ego defense for that is, whoa, you know, so-and-so's nuts, <laughs> so-and-so's so losing their mind. You've talked about how sometimes when you go to AA meetings or something, they just say, but, you know, he's nuts or, or this or that. I mean, it can be a defense, but for our purposes, what we're doing is we're just kind of looking at, at really the familiarity is the ego defense and the, and the need to be attentive is really what we're we're coming at. Does that kind of address it? Or is there any other aspects of familiarity that there's a part in the teacher's manual uh, section how should the teacher of God spend his day? And there's a sentence and the sentence is routines as such are dangerous because they easily becomes God become gods in their own right, threatening the very goals for which they were set up. And that line to me tells me again that, oh, how, that's what the ego always wants to do with everything. That's part of its familiarity defense. And the ego will attempt to do it with the course even, you know, get neurotic about, you know, not missing a lesson or if he says do it five times, repeat something five times a day, getting in a panic attack if you forgot one, or you did one too many, or something like that. Or even with meditation, I mean, Bud was bringing up some 
quotes from a book that Hugh Prather wrote about Joel Goldsmith, and it was really wonderful.